Hello everyone, welcome to screencast number 24. And in this screencast, I'm going to show you how to redirect your local webcam to any computer anywhere around the world. The only requirement is a decent internet connection on both sides. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first question that you might ask is why would you even need something like this? So let me give you some context and use cases. This might be extremely useful if you are a streamer and you travel a lot. Or if you, like me, use one single powerful computer for all your work needs and you just travel with a less powerful but much lighter laptop. Now, imagine the power of this. Laptops are generally lighter but much less powerful than a desktop computer. And if you want a beefier laptop, you'll have to choose between cost, weight, and performance. And if you want to stream for and long, though, this will inevitably add fan noise and reduce battery life into the mix. So what do you do? You put your powerful computers in your server cabinet or in a different room, and you remote into it to do anything. But while it does eliminate all the heat, noise, performance, and weight issues, the only barrier for you to stream from a remote setup, whether in the local network or outside it, is transmission of a low latency video feed. But now with what I am going to show you, you'll be able to achieve that painlessly. And as an added benefit, you can apply all sorts of video effects and filters to the resulting webcam stream. Now getting started is extremely simple. You just need two pieces of software, one of which you might already have installed on your computer, Chrome and OBS. Now, if you've never heard about OBS or how to install it on your system, do not worry. OBS is an extremely powerful video streaming and recording software. And the most awesome thing about it is that it's open source and surrounded by a wonderful community. You'll find plenty of guides on how to install and get started with OBS on YouTube. Now, once you've installed OBS on your more powerful stay-at-home machine, what you next need to do is basically launch OBS. And you'll most likely be greeted with a screen similar to mine. Now, there are two menus that we need to work with here. Uh, one is the profile menu and one is the scene collection menu. So again, these are two different ways of storing settings in OBS. You can see already I have three different profiles. The only difference between these three scenes is the base or the canvas size. So the canvas size is this black area that you can see here. So I have used these three different profiles as three different canvas sizes. Now, profiles are independent of scenes. And if you don't have anything on there, or if you have an untitled profile, rename it and name it 720p. And after that, what we are going to be doing is just changing one feature in this profile. Do that by launching settings. What I did there was press command, um, comma, or you can go into the OBS menu and launch the preferences. And if you go to the video section, you just need to change the base canvas resolution and the output scale resolution both to 720p. And that's basically it. You've got your profile for 720p. Now, you might ask why 720p? Now, the basic reason behind having a 720p profile is that uh, most likely my remote machine or the less powerful laptop that I'll be carrying around outside my local network will have a 720p webcam, that is FaceTime cam in my case. Um, and that means that I want to use it to its fullest potential, and that will only be if I have a 720p output as well. So the next thing we'll need to do is uh, go into the scene collection menu. Most likely you'll see uh, an untitled collection, so the scene collection menu also has the menu items that you saw on the profile menu. Now, if you have an untitled scene, you can go ahead and rename that scene and I'll call it remote webcam. If you have a bunch of scenes already, you can go ahead and create a new scene and that way it'll always ask for your theme name. Now, once you've created the scene, next thing is launching Google Chrome. Now, inside Google Chrome, I will take you to the backbone of this whole setup, and it's called video.ninja. Completely free, completely open source. It's being developed by this awesome guy called Steve Segwin. 
So what this does is forwards your video from point A to point B, browser to browser, without any server in between. So what it what it enables you to do basically is have a very low latency video stream on the receiving end. It has loads of features and I'm not going to go into detail here, but we are going to be using the add your camera to OBS feature um, to actually achieve what we are targeting. So if I click on add your camera to OBS, you can instantly see that I have my camera added to the screen. Um, nothing's happened yet, but my camera is visible. And I, if I right click, there, there is all, all sorts of different options that I have here. Not to worry much about that at this point, though. It, it also chooses the audio source by default. So um, that's, that's a handy thing. Now, once I click start, what I will see is the generic video conferencing screen where I can share my screen and do all sorts of settings and stuff as well. Um, but I see this, this link. So what we are going to be doing is using this link. So this link basically displays whatever is on our sending end. So this link is very important. But the problem with this link is, is this link is temporary. So every time you create a new session, this link will change. To get around it, what we are going to be doing is using a service called Short. Io. Now this is a free service till like 500 short links. Um, basically, it's a URL short link service, but with a power feature. The power feature is once you've created your short URL, you will be able to edit the original URL. So what we'll do is what the paste the link we just copied and change the slug to something readable like a remote webcam. So once we've done that, I can save it and I have got a short link. So what we need to do then is copy this URL. So once you have that short URL, the next thing and probably last thing is creating a new browser source. So what we'll do, we'll name this something like webcam and create that new browser source. Now you'll see all sorts of different options here. And what we are interested in is the width and the height of the browser source. So that will be 1280 by 720. We also check this box called Control Audio via OBS. And lastly, we paste the short URL in the URL field. And if I click OK, soon enough, my video stream, whatever's being transferred from my initiating web browser will pop up in the um, OBS canvas and well, you're basically done setting up your remote machine. You can go ahead and lock this so that you know you don't shift it around. But yeah, that's basically it. Now, as you can see, this is already starting to shape up. Now, don't worry, I won't leave you without a latency comparison, however rudimentary it may be. To simulate a location away from my home lab, I have moved out into my garden and connected my laptop to the internet using my phone's hotspot. So on my remote machine as well, the machine that I'll be carrying around, the less uh, beefier but lighter laptop, um, I need to follow the same procedure that we followed on the local much powerful machine. So first step is to launch Chrome, go into video.ninja, and we need to follow basically the same procedure. So add camera to OBS and you might be prompted for permissions if you haven't given permissions to Video Ninja already and just click on allow and there you have it you have your remote um, camera whichever camera you are using on your remote machine the less powerful machine now I can start uh, a session at this point and similarly as I showed before I just copy this link to the clipboard, uh, go to short.io, open my dashboard, and hear that there is already a link that we created just earlier. So what I can do here is paste in the new link, save this, and we have everything that we need. Now, if I go into my remote machine, and I am using Jump Desktop to remote into my machine and go into OBS. So what I will do is just to refresh this particular browser stream, 
I will exit out and then open OBS again. So as you will be able to see soon enough, my video is being redirected. If you don't see a video, you might need to change your scene to the scene we just created that is called remote webcam and profile to 720p as well if you see black corners or borders around. So for a rudimentary latency test, what I can do is I can close this out, um, launch Chrome into full screen and then just put this side by side. And there you have it. There is a bit of latency and that might be originating from, um, uh, from me remoting into uh, my computer. And again, this is not a definitive test, but as you can see, this is awesome. I mean, the latency is very, very low as we would expect it to be and as we would want it to be. You do have the freedom to play with uh, the video settings. That way you can sort of optimize how much you're sending and you can see um, it has significantly reduced uh, how much data it's sending. On the remote side, I can see my webcam. So the thing that remains on the remote side is to start the virtual camera. So once I've started the virtual camera, every application that detects the camera will see this virtual camera as a potential webcam source. Now, if you're on a Mac like me, the OBS virtual camera won't work with Photo Booth or FaceTime. And there is an OBS help page outlining Mac compatibility in detail. If you find Skype not detecting the virtual camera, you can run the two commands that are documented on the help page. And if you have issues with WhatsApp, which has recently introduced video calls on desktop, you just run the same first command and replace Skype.app with WhatsApp.app. I've included all the commands in the description box below. Now do what you will with all that power. So that brings us to the end of the screencast. If you want a more detailed guide on how I use my remote setup and tips and tricks to stream with OBS, leave a comment below. And if there's enough demand, I will get to it in a future video. I hope the screencast has been helpful and now you will be able to redirect your webcam efficiently over the internet. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and there are a few more game emulation videos and a KVM video coming up soon. So subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. Also check out some of my other videos and you might find something you like there too. Until next time, this is Open Menu signing off. Thank you.